I figured I'd share with you some of the gear I got for the year. In fact, it's it's pretty much all video related. So some of the gear that I'm getting for weddings, for corporate work, um, all revolves around video work. The the things that I'm getting are nothing new and revolutionary, but they're they're essential tools for audio and video work. Um, so let's just get into it. First on the list is the Tascam DR10L. And I apologize, this is my first kind of top down video here. So I am actually going to share the difference in audio from on camera to what you're hearing is actually this recorder. This is my second one I'm getting. Little manual, blah blah blah, cords, always great to have. Comes with a lavalier, lavalier, lavalier. Comes with a little lapel mic. As you can see, it has a little, uh, has a little windscreen to it. Little lapel clip. That's the actual lapel microphone. And here is the actual recorder. So I picked up a white one because when we do weddings, the, uh, the chance that the bride will actually want to be mic'd up, the white will, of course, hide in the dress or you know wherever we need to put it. Also, we ran into a situation where we did a wedding and the groom was wearing white. He was a uh, an Air Force. And uh, there was like there was nowhere we could put his his mic. He had no pockets and if we put a cord on the outside the, uh, the typical standard black Tascam that we get has um, it has black cord. So this comes with a little white, should hide a little bit better. So as you can see, it's got a uh, on off switch right here. You hold and slide down to turn it on and then you slide it this way to record. And the great thing about this is uh, once it's recording, it's automatically locked. You can't tap a button and um, have things stop recording it or interrupt the system here. So I don't know if that's going to focus, but there's a pretty simple menu, navigation systems, menu button, um, cycle through, different modes, things like that. This is a great recorder because once you plug in here, you can actually screw down and then you can't you can't take that out. It's locked in there. So that's a great feature. You have to actually unscrew that to get that out. So it comes with a little uh, belt clip that you can put onto the back, also a little bag, so pretty standard stuff. Let's go to the next piece. Alright, next is the Manfrotto Bridging Technology. This is also the second one that I have gotten, but it is a video tripod head. Um, those of you who are still new to the game, um, you can buy a tripod and then you can buy a tripod head separately if you desire. 
video heads are exactly what they sound like. They're tripod heads specifically for video. Um, the fluid motions This is horrible. So let's go down here. Huge box for a relatively small compact system here. Huge box, big empty hole. Okay. So, I apologize. This is actually the first one I have like this. The other one I have is the MVH. I don't know if you can see that. MVH 500AH is this brand. It's the model number. I have the 502. So, the, the main difference is, is it's a little bit bigger. Um, the, uh, the tightening and locking mechanisms are a little bit different too. So I am not going to go into a huge amount of detail about, you know, the specific functions of these models because there's about a hundred billion different things on YouTube. Um, uh, so you can learn about those. But, uh. Once it's on there, it's really nice. So the bottom here screws to the top of your tripod. And once it's on there, this fluid motion makes a very, very, very nice, smooth motion in your video. This loosens up to make it quite a bit smoother and faster that can get really stiff that way and it also pans this screw right here tightens down and once it's screwed on there it will rotate this way I got this because um, since I already have one I wanted to get another one because when I'm going to be using my camera on a gimbal and I want to quickly take my camera from my gimbal to my tripod, I can use this plate to snap it back into place real quick. And also when I'm doing a multi-camera setup, so one camera on a tripod with a video head. Uh, another camera angle on a tripod with a video head. I can have two video heads and still be able to use um, either my gimbal or other types of setups with this quick release system. So I decided this year is the time to really amp up the game on audio. Um, up until now I have had basically just some pocket camera microphones, um, some recording systems. And I've never really properly gotten a field recorder. So the difference between a field recorder and a, a quote unquote cheap um, pocket microphone is the accessibility and connectivity that you can get at certain situations. Uh, so let's go ahead and pop the actual recorder so it's not small by any means really nice little uh, plastic case comes in pretty pretty durable I'm kind of thinking that these uh, hinges are probably gonna fall apart before too long but anyway so the actual microphone has two microphones right here has some um, XLR imports right there looks like line in 
So lots of buttons, lots of different uh, connections that you can get. But basically what I can do with this is I can run a line right directly into a soundboard at a, you know, a DJ at a wedding or something like that and also get ambient audio at the same time as kind of like a backup. Um, and there's there's a lot of other things that you can do with this that, again, to be honest, I'm still learning myself. So very I'm very much looking forward to using this. Um, also, there's a little quarter inch quarter inch thread down here, so you can stick it right on top of a tripod or some kind of other stand if you need to. this right back in the case. And if you guys want a kind of little tutorial on this device after I use it, uh, for sure let me know in the comments. And if you just want to hear kind of a difference between the Tascam and the Zoom, um, I can do that too. I'll be interested to do that myself. All right, next one is nothing glamorous, but fantastic. I got some white gaffer tape. Uh, I already have a roll of black, and we ran into a situation at a wedding where the, the bride's dress, she had some tool that was ripped or something like that, and my wife um, actually fixed her dress with gaff tape. And it was fine since nobody could see it. She just used black gaff tape, but um, it made me think there's definitely going to be some situations where we want some white gaff tape. So picked up a roll. I think this was about 12 bucks or so. Um, I know you can pay a little bit less. Sometimes you can pay more. And I am curious to see how much of a shine this has on here. So it's still a pretty flat white, just like the uh, the black that I have. I think I actually got a different brand of the black, but uh, yeah, this is this isn't reflective at all. Some I do believe some of them have a little bit of a sheen to them. So um, don't know if that's a big deal to you, but it's definitely got that same amount of adhesion and not really leaving any residue. So gaff tape is a fantastic tool. All right, next up, another super glamorous product here. I got more lapel clips. So one of the downsides to the uh, Tascam DR10 is what it comes with, it comes with one of these uh, kind of cheap, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's pull it out of there. It comes with a very cheap little clip similar to this. And this little metal ring here wore out fairly quickly. I mean if you if you bend it just a little bit too much, it'll it'll snap off. But uh, what this ring does here is you, you, you pull this to open up the opening and that, that microphone, the little lapel mic, slides right in there and kind of holds it. This clips on. That clips on to like a shirt or a lapel, lapel mic, um, pretty much anywhere you need to clip it onto. But this, this thin wire on the one that came with the Tascam broke off. Um, and again, I'm kind of the type of person that knows, yeah, I could go out and I could spend $100 on just a lapel mic and not even a recorder itself um, and probably get a lot better quality. However, for what I'm doing, I picked up... I think there's uh, five or six of these in this pack for about five bucks. So 
I'm going to go that route, and if something breaks, I got another one right there. And I'm going to keep all these right in this little packet and uh, put it in my camera bag, and they're ready to go. Next on the list is SD card. SD card, SD card, SD card. I think you're following me. There's a few new SD cards for the year. Uh, that is about it. I'm not going to open SD cards because they're SD cards. I will tell you that I get, I always try to look for the fastest write speed I can get and also kind of quote unquote afford. Um, I will be very honest with you, SanDisk, um, Lexar, some of the other brands that you're going to see, in my opinion, there's no difference. Um, I have been told that at some point SanDisk is pretty much the only manufacturer out there. The technology that's built into the SanDisk, they are the ones that made the technology. Um, now, I could be wrong. This is just kind of my opinion. I have used Lexar, I've used SanDisk, I've used Kensington, Kingston, sorry, Kingston. And it's not like I've noticed any difference, but what I do notice is in the right speed. So if you get down to 85 megabits a second or even lower on some of these cameras that are 20 megapixel cameras or 40 megapixel cameras, some of these crazy high image quality cameras, when you start to shoot um, in burst mode or kind of doing sports where you're shooting lots and lots of photos at once that write speed uh, that is what's going to that's where you're going to run into problems if, you're, if your write speed is too low for the camera you're using that's probably that's probably why you're having issues uh, other than that from what I've heard is um, customer service. Some companies probably have better customer service than others. I would hope to think Lexar and SanDisk have much better customer service than others. Um, so that's kind of that. I did get one CF card uh, for my 5D Mark IV. For a long time I was using 64 gig cards and just calling it good. I was using maybe one or two during a wedding. And uh, I'm wisening up and going back to smaller cards and changing them out more frequently. Um, granted, I, sh I still shoot with cameras that have two... That's four. I still shoot with cameras that have two card slots. So there is a bit of a backup system going on there. However, um, changing out your cards more frequently is still an added step that I recommend doing. So if you're going to do any kind of events, um, especially weddings, try and back up your, your data as, as much as possible. Um, and changing out cards at smaller intervals, that's a 16 is still uh, still a good practice so if you guys had fun sorry I couldn't use my knife um, please leave a comment below uh, hopefully you liked the video if so give me a thumbs up thumbs down whatever you feel like uh, also let me know of any videos you guys want to see in the future